Greetings. I'm Suzanne Finkmeyer, if you don't know who I am. I need to clear up a few things tonight. I need to clarify a few things. If you don't know who I am, I am a writer. First and foremost, I am a writer. I have written for Papios for over 10 years. A column called No Longer Quivering, where I looked at the quiverful evangelical movement. I was a member of that movement for many, many years, and I haven't been in the last 17 years. What I started doing was I started cataloging everything I saw that was just squishy and awful and weird about the whole thing. So many things. And this week's news about Mike Bickle, what well, was not a shock to me, I heard rumors of this. I knew people that had experienced this firsthand who talked about it, who'd been shut down. Okay, so those are the people that I write for. Those are the people that I talk about, for, talk for on my channel here. So since Sunday when I did my video on Bickle, I have had a whole lot of ugly coming from a parade of ignorant is the only way to describe it. Bickles, pickle ticklers, I guess you'd call them, the kind of people that support somebody who has been alleged to have taken sexual advantage of young women for many years. And I don't know any of the details of this. Quite frankly, I don't want to know the details. I know the details of what was shared with me. And I'm not sharing any of that. So those of you idiots that are calling me a gossiper, well, it's going to take yourself away because you're not posting here. So that's what I wanted to talk about a little bit today. I have talked about before on my channel, don't pick on anybody. Don't harass anybody I talk about. These are just my opinions. That's all very true. But what's not so spelled out is I've said, don't be rude to anybody, not even each other. And I stand by that. So I'm forced to because of Christians, not because of the heathen, my heathen buddies. And I don't always identify as Christian anymore either because that is a word that is loaded with toxicity. Even though I still believe in Jesus and I believe in his words. And I'm nominally a Christian. I'm really ex-evangelical reconstructionist. And that means that when you show up and you defend Mike Bickle and others who've done innumerable harm to the body of Christ and to so many of their followers, that's not going to be tolerated here. Not in my space. My space is safe for people who have experienced spiritual abuse, sexual abuse, violence, all sorts of things at the hands of those who claim to follow Christ. This is a safe space for that here. Or people who are struggling with their sexuality and they've been told what sexuality they are is not right for them or anybody else, those are the people that I'm here for. If you're flouncing around, flouncing around, flouncing around, oh, heavens, pearl, pearl clutch. Um, if you are flouncing around, thank you, fine. Because somebody has dared criticize your favorite sacred llama for copping a feel or whatever, guess what? That's not going to fly here. What will happen was the band bus will run over you and remove your comment. And I will take your lovely little comment and I will move it to Jerks for Jesus, my website that I established back when I was working for Patheos because too many non-denominational high demand religion Christians evangelicals would flounce in, declare every word that I, I wrote was false, which was not true, and just flounce around just being general annoyances. I'm just going to say it. Being real jerks for Jesus. So if you come here into my space and you disrespect myself or any of our people, anybody who has been hurt by, by your group, guess what? Know what happens? Banning time. So I'm putting that in. And I'm also putting comments on moderated for a while. Um, look, if you can't even respect my posted comment policy that's on my page, you don't have the right to be speaking here. That's 
ball it is. And they'll start screeching about his First Amendment and you're going to sue me. Go right ahead. I'm not even in those states. It would be different. It would be different for you. It would cost you a butt ton of money. That's all I'm going to say. Um, and no one is above no one is above the law. I'm just going to say that again, too. No one is above the law. In the years that I was writing for Pathios, I saw a big sexual scandal go down with teenage boy, well, teenage girls and young adult boys at a church in Arizona where the family members of the girls didn't even realize that what had been done to their girls was a crime. And so well, I helped those people. I helped them reach out to CPS and the police and file police reports and get it investigated. That's the sort of thing I do. And there is nothing that you can say to me in the commentary that is any worse than the crap that was flung at me when I left my old church. Even though I left because my husband wanted to leave. It was time for us to go, our family. He wanted to go to the Methodist church and somehow I became... The focus of everybody's rage at our old church we were leaving. And that launched me into my writing career. And I'm working on my book right now. It's called With Strange Fire. It talks about being in a faraway, ended up in a faraway place with Strange Fire. Like Bickle's place. Like so many of these places. I did the conference hall. And I wasn't alone. I have friends that still do the conference hall. And I don't do that anymore. I will not go to a conference, a women's teaching. I will not go to a Sunday school, any of that. I am done with that. Years of that, years of hearing the dumbest crap in the world that they tried to say was, was theology that didn't, didn't actually measure up to anything that Jesus ever said. And that's really where my measuring stick is right now. And I am sorry, but if you're a pastor or you belong to a church and your church harms people, when the victims come talking to me, I'll be talking about it here. Sorry. Sorry if you're offended. Sorry if you're clutching your pearls. But that is just the way it is. That's the kind of woman I am. I was born for a time like this. Um, and... I'm going to keep on keeping on. So if you keep on with the nasty comments, I'm just going to keep moving them to jerks for Jesus and answer them there. You don't want me answering them there because that won't be as nice as when I answer people here. So that's it. So tomorrow I'm going to start a new series. I want to talk about the murder that took place surrounding IHOP KC, IHOP Kansas City. Bickle wasn't so much involved in this, but I think it's important to return back to the death of Bethany Deaton and take a look at what happens when you put people in that highly charged emotional atmosphere who have problems. You have a man that's, that is attempting to not be gay, who is gay, who ends up helping murder his wife. When you have that emotionally charged thing full of expectation that you're going to do x y and z and that's going to be great and we're all gonna roll on the floor and laugh it can lead you some really weird places weirder than expecting feathers and gold dust to drop from the ceiling you know i've said many times i'm old i've seen everything under the sun but i praise god that i've been out for 17 years 17 years was ago was my escape from this kind of place and I'm almost at the 17th anniversary of this I should say almost because about a week before Thanksgiving 17 years ago is when I left my old church my old non-denominational high demand religious organization my taco church totalitarian authoritative church organization so that's my anniversary. I'm excited. I'm excited to be out all this time. You're here in my art studio where I've been hanging around all week playing with watercolors again.
trying to switch from oil painting to watercolors has been quite the challenge for me. Just like leaving my old church and starting my spiritual recovery was. Now, I do have a video that is the first one on my channel where I talk about leaving ex-evangelical, how I got out. And if you are here and you're interested in doing such a thing yourself, look at my video. I will leave a description below. And that will give you at least a roadmap to look at, think about getting out. Because there were so many different things to think about. Ours went down very quickly when, when I left. I wasn't going to leave. I was even on the worship team that day. I was up on the platform rehearsing when I ended up making the decision to leave. Because I saw a member of the congregation was harming my child. Because he was running his mouth. He was running his mouth about the reason that my husband was leaving the church. And my child was down there hearing it crying. Hearing these words and she started crying. And that's not okay. That's not cool. So for me that was it. That was the end. It's like I can't deal with this nonsense anymore. So I know I'm rambling. Whatever. Okay. So most of you, most of my viewers are wonderful people that I dearly love, that I interact with. You guys, great. Welcome. Those people that just want to throw turds, please skedaddle on out and go somewhere else. I see that Mike Bickle has his own channel, so why don't you go over there and see what he has to say. It's better than throwing rocks here because this is just going to end you up on Dirks for Jesus. You really don't want me. You really don't want me uh, poking you there. Okay, regular viewers, I love you. Everybody else, I'm mentally flying double birds right now.